Today's video is going to be a little bit different, but hopefully in a good kind of way. I'll be doing an art challenge, but in addition to that, this video is also being entered in Jazza's Win My Channel competition. He is going to be selecting seven up-and-coming YouTubers and showcasing them on his channel. Now, Jazza does a lot of challenges. He and Draw With Waffles, honestly, are the two folks I go to for like challenges or ideas to better certain skills that I have that are, are already really good. It's just once you challenge yourself, you're kind of working outside of your regular framework. Now, Jazz has also asked that anybody that entered this competition must be a small YouTuber. You have to have less than or maybe equal to 50,000 subscribers to be able to enter, which is kind of cool because he's specifically catering and helping out smaller YouTube channels, which is exactly what this is. Now, he also suggested do something creative, arty, and inspirational. So you notice, compared to my previous videos, that this one's structured a little bit differently and hopefully in a better kind of way. So let's get into this. Welcome, welcome, folks. I'm Joe from Joe Thinks, and today we'll be doing the Green Art Challenge. Now, the Green Art Challenge is a piece of artwork that you make pretty much all in green. Now, I'll be making one exception to that, that I will have like a peachy skin color, but I'll be relying on the human eye to kind of turn that green by the end of the piece of artwork. Now, knowing that I was going to be working all with green, I decided to totally go grayscale with the way that I approached doing a lot of the color. And I like the chaoticness that comes with doing grayscale as well. Now, I didn't ever actually take the art palette and create a layer. That's one thing I would normally do in this particular circumstance. I didn't. I kind of kept it in my head. I was going to keep it free-flowing and kind of keep it light, you know, in the lighter quadrant of green. Now, when I think green superheroes, particularly female green superheroes, I really think of two. One is She-Hulk and the other is Polaris, Magneto's other daughter. Now, Polaris is the younger half-sister of Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, which have both gotten time on the silver screen for both Fox movies as well as Disney movies. It's interesting how Quicksilver died the same movie that he was put in in the MCU, and he is so incredibly funny in the Fox version of him, which is probably dead too now, even if not written in story. Now, the thing about Polaris that I remember, you know, being a comic book fan that began reading comics in the early 80s and mid 80s, I think it was more mid 80s I became an X-Men fan, mid to late 80s, really. But Polaris and Havoc, Cyclops' older brother, they have this relationship that you, you heard about, but you didn't barely ever get to see them, per se, because they were having a normal life. They succeeded at being X-Men and retired. And that's the way that uh, I remember that being presented growing up was there are success stories. There are folks that can go through the entirety of being an X-Men and then live a normal life when it's all said and done. They were kind of the mutant couple that you wanted the other mutant couples to end up like. They chose each other over being superheroes. I mean, while the normal X-Men teams were all out doing different things, they were at home working away at living a normal everyday life. It was beautiful. I really like the way that the shading and the highlight worked out quite a bit. Once it gets to her eyes, working on that was, was a lot of fun. Now, as for the relationship of Havoc, whose real name is Alex Summers, who is Scott Summers' older brother. Scott Summers, by the way, is Cyclops from the X-Men. And Lorna Dane, which is Polaris's real name, they didn't have it easy either. She was possessed, and he, of course, uh, just randomly emits plasma, which can be a problem. Now, the other reason that Polaris is important to me is when I was younger, in my teenage years, when I was learning color composition, various females of the X-Men were how I learned to adjust and learn color. And Polaris was green for me. She rests in between orange, which was Jean Grey, and violet or purple, which was Psylocke. And a higher tier of color was uh, red, which was Scarlet Witch, Polaris' older sister, Kitty Pride, which would be blue, and then Rogue or Siren, depending on what I was doing with it, would be yellow, kind of. That's how I envisioned yellow uh, quite frequently and worked with yellows through their outfits or through backgrounds I was working on with them. Polaris is also in the show The Gifted, which is awesome. 
She starts off with a little chunk of what appears to be Magneto's helmet in coin form. And then later when she actually turns it into the face shield that Polaris actually wears. It's very, very cool. And she's portrayed by a really gifted actress, uh, Emma Dumont. I'm really pleased with the performance. Good job. Now, specifically for this piece, I was looking for a more personal moment. You know, superheroes go out and they do awesome things. And like I was saying, Polaris and Havoc got to live a normal life. They got to be everyday people quite a bit. So for this picture, although she's a superhero or villain, depending on how you look at it, you know, her lineage, but she's having a very human moment. Or I guess very, very mundane moment, very civilized moment. Now, if you didn't know this too, Polaris has powers similar to Magneto. She can manipulate metal. And they always depicted her powers as green and her outfit as green, thus, you know, the green challenge. So again, she's kind of going over her face. And I always thought about this. If Magneto and Polaris can manipulate magnetism and iron, could they like smooth their own skin out? Could she use her powers to make her skin look perfect, like the ultimate cosmetic product? You know, because again, we're, we're having a moment here. She's not an icon or a mutant. She's a girl. And if so, she's just smoothing her skin out in a girl's very personal moment. Using her ultimate built-in beauty cream, you know what I'm saying? Because she's never been, like, ashamed of her abilities. And she didn't reject her father, either, when she found out. Now, as for the finality of this picture, I could have gone crazy with multiple shadows, kind of indicating that there's a mirror there that's, you know, out of shot. But I decided not to double down on shadows and to leave the background kind of simple, because I didn't do an awful lot to cause a foreground to pop out. But total, I think that this met what I was looking to achieve. The skin does look kind of green with all that other green even though we know that's not green skin so i'm i'm happy with it i think this was a success now i was a little worried that i wouldn't have time if this didn't work out to make any major changes to either the piece of art or this video which would overall just suck but i think that this worked out really well so if you like this video why not hit the like button down there? And if you haven't, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know when I release new videos. Who's your favorite X-Men female? I'd like to hear about it. Leave me a comment down below. And remember, be kind to one another. And use your turn signals.